Right now the Tahoe's stopped on the north side of 54, heading west, just on the west side of Meade, Kansas. It had been a pretty good day thus far. It had been a good day. The roads were clear. My truck was running smooth. I was getting some good thinking in. I'd helped to pull the truck off the side of the road, and then later with the help of another passerby, helped to pull the car to the ditch. I was making my way down to Phoenix. I had been up in Minnesota for the previous two months since the conclusion of the police accountability tour. And instead of heading straight back to the Shire, I decided to spend six weeks in somewhat warmer climates. The date was February 12th. As I passed through Meade, a town of less than 2,000 people in southwest Kansas, I saw my rearview mirror uh, F-150 with the light bar on the interior that was on as if there was an emergency. I stopped and uh, Dan Fonansteel walked up, told me that I had failed to signal. What happened is through town there are two lanes and then as you exit town they, they merge into one. Mr. Fonansteel said that I didn't signal when that happened. I'm not sure, did that happen? Does he have evidence? Uh, but was there a victim? That's the more important question and he was unable to point to the victim, just point to a hypothetical. Uh, essentially the stop in total was 30 minutes. Uh, the first interaction between myself and Mr. Fawn and Steele was approximately four minutes. He was back in his truck on the radio, on his computer for the next 13 minutes. And then the final 13 minutes was uh, his return to the vehicle and conversation with me. And obviously in retrospect, there are some things I could have done different during this interaction. For one, I should have put my phone that was recording uh, up on the dash that would have had a better picture of Mr. Fawn and Steele. But I was streaming, um, I didn't have connectivity in that area so the footage was stored to my phone. It was uploaded the next day, but since uh, during my conversation with Mr. Fawn and Steele I did disclose my address, I have kept that video as private because I don't obviously want to get a lot of mail to that address. How's it going? Yes, sir. I'm Officer Fawn and Steele, make police front. The reason why I stopped you is when you changed lanes back over to get come back out of town, you didn't use your turn signal. Okay. Driver's license. Want to let you know I'm recording this. Pardon? Said I want to let you know I'm recording this just for my records. Okay. Why are you so nervous? If you're, if you're used to recording us, then why are you so nervous? Well, if I don't do anything wrong and someone comes up and stops me, I don't, uh, you know, it's not something I do to somebody else, so I don't, you know, I, I don't think it is uh should be part of a peaceful society and it's you know it's a, something i don't like seeing so did you realize you didn't use your turn signal to change back then no i just i didn't i just okay. just thought i'd merge that's, that's but... the reason why i'm stopping you okay. okay is all your information on here current it should be yeah, it should be is it, is it what can you verify the address which is my mailing address okay. have you got proof of insurance for your vehicle uh, i'm from new hampshire we don't have to have insurance in new hampshire but in Kansas, you have to have insurance to be able to travel through our state. Uh, I'm not aware of that. I've traveled throughout the states and have not had an issue elsewhere. Okay. You got your registration for your truck? Sure. Alright, I'm going to sit back and verify these documents and I'll be back as soon as I can. Sure. Can I get you? Could you remind me your name again, please? Dan Fawn and Steel. Fawn and Steel. Chief of Police here in this town. Okay. And Meade? Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, here. Here comes the police employee, it's 2.30. He's got some paperwork in hand. Okay, so there's your registration. All right, thank you. Right. Unfortunately, I'm writing for failing to use the turn signal and also I'm writing for no proof of insurance. The state of Kansas does require that any vehicle driven on the highways has uh, insurance. Um, this is a must appear. This is also a misdemeanor. I could arrest you for not having it, but I'm just going to let you come back and appear. If you do not appear, um, they'll be they'll, they'll suspend your license out of, out of New Hampshire. Okay. Is there was there a victim today? A victim, sir. Yes, sir. The victim is if you run into somebody that you don't have insurance. Right. Okay, that that would be a victim. Right, but I mean, was there a victim today? A victim today? Did I cause a victim? Okay. I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity to walk away. I could impound your vehicle and arrest you for not having proof of insurance. We can either, you can go ahead and sign this and then come back and appear, or we'll put you in front of the judge tomorrow. That's your choice.
I'm giving you that option. I don't have to. I could I could just go ahead and arrest you and impound your vehicle and then you can go in front of the judge tomorrow. And that's that statute number that supposedly says that it's mandatory that I have insurance to pass through Kansas? Yeah. All states require insurance. Liability insurance. Like I said, you have a court date of March 10th. You will need to appear for March at March 10th at 3 p.m. to settle this up with the judge. If you have proof of insurance, you can fax a copy in to this fax number. And then they will drop that. But if you don't have that, on this date and time that's indicated here at the top of this, then you will need to appear. And if you don't appear, then the judge is going to suspend your license. But if you choose to sign it and, and continue, you must appear March 10th at 3 p.m. Again, I, I mean, are you a law enforcer or a peace officer? I would... I'm law enforcer. Okay, so whatever they put on the books, you enforce? No questions asked? Well, this is a discretion, okay? I'm, I'm giving you the opportunity to appear at March 10th. Again, I would hope that you, you took the job to protect people and, I am and trying to protect, protect people, people and property, and I haven't I'm done anything wrong. People from, okay, go ahead, sir, go ahead, let's step out of the vehicle. Go ahead and leave your recording device on the hood. We're just going to go ahead and, and go around about this another way, okay? Go ahead and shut your vehicle off, put your keys on the dash. I'd rather not do that if I, if I could be on my way. I prefer that. I was giving you that opportunity, sir. You know, I, you know, I don't know what else you want me to say. It's, it's a state law that you need to have proof of insurance or insurance coverage to drive on the highway. Okay, I could cite you for this, but you want more options. I don't have any other options to give you. I was, I was trying to have a conversation. I wasn't okay. trying to be adversarial. Okay. So what you, I mean, we're kind of already taking up a lot of your time. Um, like I said. So March 10th is in, uh, just almost a month then. Correct. Okay, well, all right. I'll, uh, I'll sign the paperwork then. Like I said, you don't even have to, to sign it. I can just say refuse to sign, but it don't change the fact that you will need to appear because once I turn this in and you don't appear, then they're going to suspend your license and then, you know, it, it's just going to come through. You know, the state of Kansas, and that's who I'm, that's who I'm certified under for the state of Kansas. Okay, the state requires all vehicles to have proof of insurance. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I just need you to come to, come to court to, to explain why you feel like you don't need insurance. I mean, I'd rather not pay the cost to have a vehicle impounded and everything. I guess, um, yeah, I guess, uh, if I refuse to sign that, and but I come back on March, is that, that's still, that's... I'm just going to write down where I ask you to sign that you just refuse to sign. Okay. Okay. When you come back, I will be sitting in the courtroom. Okay. okay. The judge may or may not let me explain because it is it's just going to be like your first appearance. He's going to give you the opportunity to set it for trial, and then you'll get another leeway so you can come back at a later date, and then you and I will be able to, to talk everything out. Okay. All right. I guess I prefer that route then. Okay. Okay, so you want to sign? You don't want to sign? I, I prefer not to. Okay. Yeah, just so you know, my question is to you. I wasn't, again, I'm not trying to be adversarial to you personally. I'm just, 
I just, you know, would prefer to live in a place where folks don't initiate force on anybody else, no matter what, what, where they work or what, and what they do. And we're not. Okay. okay. That's not my intention whatsoever. My but, concern but, is, I need to bring it to your attention, okay, that you're not allowed to be on the, the highways without insurance. You need to try to get a hold of an insurance company and get some insurance. You'll have to come back and explain to the judge why you didn't have insurance at this date and time, okay? But if you have insurance, you'll be a lot more lenient with you. And, and you know, you're from, you're from a state that's far away from here. Like I said, I don't know what their, what their laws is as far as insurance. I did call our Kansas Highway Patrol just to make sure that New Hampshire didn't have some sort of state deal that covers other states. Uh, I was advised that the state of Kansas doesn't matter. You got to have insurance, okay? Okay. okay. All right. We're all good? Yep. Here's your license back and you're free to go, okay? okay. All right. Well, Please. have a good day. Uh, just appear March 10th, okay? That way you can get this all settled. Because if you don't, then they're going to suspend your license and then you're more likely to get arrested for not having a license. Alright? Because that is a misdemeanor too. Yep. Alright? Alright. Is there any other questions I can help you with? No, that's about it, I guess. Alright. Alright, well, be safe, have a good day. You too. I'll be do safe. my best. So where does this lead me now? We'll see. I am told from a friend back in the Shire that the criminal outfit that claims to control others in the Shire does have a uh, uh, what's called a violator compact uh, with those who claim to control others in other political jurisdictions. Uh, so if there was a failure to appear that it may uh, result in some actions, some aggressive actions by people in the Shire uh, who, who may consider it just. But again, since there was no victim, uh, I don't think any of this is just. I don't think the ransom is just. I don't think an order to show up is just. I don't think um, you know, the demand to allocate coin to uh, get policies that I may or may not need is just. I mean, I, I think it's worthwhile to have AAA. I've had AAA for years. I believe I'm a good driver. I put tens of thousands of miles on the roads. I have a forward-facing camera on my vehicle, uh, also to help capture the truth of how I do drive. So what this interaction really brought to mind also for me was the quote by Spooner about the highwayman. Highwayman is a term that's not used as often today, but it means a thief who preys on travelers. The highwayman takes solely upon himself the responsibility, danger, and crime of his own act. He does not pretend that he has any rightful claim to your money or that he intends to use it for your own benefit. Furthermore, having taken your money, he leaves you as you wish him to do. He does not keep protecting you by commanding you to bow down and serve him by requiring you to do this and forbidding you to do that.